Dubuque, the oldest city in Iowa, west of the Mississippi, has the first ever organized fire department within the state. Back when there wasn't much to the city, just a few houses and buildings, the first elective board of Dubuque passed a number of ordinances on April 24, 1837, when the town had been settled for four years. One of the ordinances was that they required that each resident have a leather bucket. And when the alarm of fire was sounded, each resident was required to grab their bucket and run to the fire. There were several wells around the town that the residents would draw water from in case of a fire. This early, unorganized system was known as the Bucket Brigade. From this early beginning began the start of the Dubuque Fire Department. The Bucket Brigade evolved in 1842 into the first independent fire company. It consisted of 25 volunteers. They formed the first independent fire company and it was named the First Iowa. They used the name intermittently from 1842 till the early 1850s. Several more independently owned fire organizations followed. So the early days of the fire department would have been volunteer companies or departments uh, around town that were you know, made up of business people who just responded when there was a fire. The city purchased its first engine in 1854 from the Huneman Company in Boston for the volunteer firemen, forming Washington Number 1. The engine was a hand-drawn engine that ran on manpower. The fire crew had to pull the heavy engine using ropes. At first, they would house the little engine wherever they could. The firemen never liked the engine. And by 18, 1855, they had abandoned that fire engine, the Hunneman engine, and they bought a button fire engine. The weight of the engine made it difficult for the firemen to arrive at a fire quickly and to draw water out because the pumping was tiresome. The following year, Washington received the new button engine and passed down the unwanted Huneman engine, organizing the second independent volunteer fire company, number two, Protection. The L button engine was operated the same as a Huneman in that it was hand-drawn, hand-operated. The difference in engines was the design of the body. The button was called a piano engine due to the similarity of its body to a grand piano. It was lighter and pumped with greater ease. The Huneman was passed down again, starting mechanics engine number three. Washington number one and protection number two were located within the block of 4th Street. It was soon relocated to 600 Locust Street, which is now known as Washington Park. Mechanics number three stayed on the northeast corner of 13th and Washington Street. Uh, two of the fire companies were German, one fire company was Irish. And it is known that if there were a fire call in the city and the various companies were racing to the fire, if they encountered each other, there were occasions where they stopped and had a Donnybrook and forgot about the fire. It wasn't until 1858 did Dubuque Independent Fire Departments receive more structure. The ordinance brought the independent fire companies under a more stringent set of rules due to resident complaints regarding the role and operation of the independent fire companies. In 1867, they convinced the city council to purchase a steam fire engine for them. The first steam-powered fire engine, a Silsby second-class engine. They built an engine house for it at 5th and Iowa, and they formed a hose company to run with and operate the steam engine. It was called Hawkeye No. 1. So finally, they're starting to enter the modern world. The steam engine was a horse-drawn apparatus that contained a boiler and a steam-driven pump. The steam drove the pump, which was capable of drafting water from a cistern, pond, or river, and most often being fed from a hydrant. So if there was a fire, they had to borrow horses, either from another city department or from uh, one of the local livery stables to pull their engines to the fires. It, it wasn't until about 1874 that the fire department started purchasing horses to pull their steam engines. By January 1884, the Dubuque Fire Department was instituted as a full paid fire department under control of the city of Dubuque. 
They had firefighters on duty all the time. Started that paramilitary structure, who's in charge and what they do. Divided up into actual companies. So like today we have six fire stations. We've had six fire stations for over 100 years. By 1919, all the horse-drawn apparatus were gone and all the fire apparatus were motorized. This caused a change in shifts for the department. Originally, firefighters would all work one shift of seven days a week with only three hours a day off for meals. An additional shift of 12-hour days and 12-hour nights were added. After two to three months, the crews would rotate. We have a structure that looks very similar. If somebody walked in from 50 years ago, they would recognize the structure pretty, pretty closely. Over the years, like everything else, the Dubuque Fire Department evolved from the early days with technological advances. One of the most notable is the EMS certification. EMS is the ambulance services that provides acute care during an emergency situation in the back of an ambulance or truck. You start with the EMT class and that's about a semester long test out for that and then you have to have your certification in hand in order to take the, go on to the paramedic. The paramedic's a, a full year, long, hard, exhausting, kind of go crazy. It can be very fast paced. If you get behind, you're going to struggle. A lot of clinical hours, you spend your life in an ER and on an ambulance. You can't wait for it to end, but then you still love what you do. In the ambulance, we make contact with the patient and we ask them, you know, well, what is going on? We figure out what the situation is and then we go from there, what kind of treatment plan they need. For the past 20 years, having an EMS certification or a paramedic is required to be a certified firefighter in the state of Iowa. Medical services is a large component of any modern fire department. About 75 to 80 percent of the calls received for services are EMS related. All engine companies in the Dubuque County have advanced life support equipment. The Dubuque Fire Department currently has 89 personnel. In the next 10 years, it is forecast that everyone on the department will be a paramedic. We do a lot of calls. We have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of things that we didn't used to do, and a lot of things that we deal with that uh, people years ago in the profession never had to worry about. We see some horrible stuff sometimes that can be heartbreaking. Some of us don't realize how much stress we've built ourselves under. So we can learn from other people's misfortunes. And just knowing that, like I said, when you have a good outcome from a bad situation, very rewarding. At the same token, obviously any time that someone gets injured or worse yet, loses their life, it's, it's very tragic. You know, I may not know them, but still it's a community member, it's a family member to somebody. And so it's always tough to have a bad outcome. People is having their worst day. And you can't always make it perfect, but you try to make it better. Probably nothing more rewarding where someone comes up and thanks you for what you did. You know, we, we just do our job. We think nothing of going up there and putting a fire because that's what we train for, so we get paid to do. One thing that has steadily remained constant over the years is the Dubuque firefighters are out in the community. I think a lot of stereotypes are what people see from TV shows that we're always running into burning buildings every day and pulling people out every day. And other than that, we, we play pool in the firehouses and things like that, and it's all men, but obviously that's not true. The fire department routinely does inspection on fire hydrants, participate in community events such as tours, emergency rescue demonstrations, and running calls. The impression of firefighters commonly seen on television is not even close to what they do in a day. Probably the most appealing thing is knowing that you're making a difference in people's lives and knowing that you hopefully are preventing and educating the community on how fires are starting. We want to prevent any tragic things from happening. I was doing CPR on the, and clinically they were at dead when I was with them, but we were able to revive that person and two weeks later seeing them on the front page of the paper is very rewarding. The most memorable is, is when you actually impact somebody's life and you have a hand in, in saving that or you know saving a family if their house is on fire. That is definitely the coolest part of the job. It doesn't always have to be like a full code or cardiac arrest. It can just be having whatever serious medical issue and you helped get them back to, to being alive. Overall, it is the best job in the world. I couldn't imagine doing anything else for a living. It's what I love to do. And I think most of the guys here, you could honestly walk up most of them and say, you know what, this is what I want to do. I'm not here for a paycheck. I'm here because I like where I work. I like who I work with and it's just what I want to do. The many brave men and women of the Dubuque Fire Department have aspired to be in the position that they are. 
they courageously served the city of Dubuque like many before them.